Hello there and uh, welcome to our midday service. Uh, it's Malcolm MacDonald and I'm the vicar of St Mary's Church in Loughton. I'm so glad to welcome you to our midday service today. Uh, we've come to worship the Lord Jesus uh, and I know many of you are joining from your homes and many of you are shielding. Uh, some of us are emerging from lockdown. We're all sorts of different scenarios at the moment, but we have come today for this time of midday prayer and an opportunity for us to spend time in the Lord's presence. And so I'm praying that God will touch each one of our lives with his love, his grace, and his power today. I wonder if I could just pray for us as we begin this morning. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you today with thankful, with glad hearts, Lord. We thank you that we can worship you in freedom today. We thank you, Lord, for your love uh, that is everlasting, that is unconditional, that is full and free. We thank you, Lord, for the saving work of Jesus on the cross for each one of us. And I pray today that you would help us to put our faith and trust in him in Christ alone for our salvation. Lord Jesus, pour out your love and your blessing and your Holy Spirit on us now as we worship you together. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we join together in midday prayer, the liturgy that we're going to be using and you can join with is available on the St. Mary's Church Loughton website. So I hope you've been able to grab that and that we can be able to join together. So sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We're going to have a psalm, uh, which is Psalm 121. This is a real psalm of hope. I love this psalm. Uh, sometimes I sing this psalm uh, in the, the Scottish meter that I grew up with. And it's a beautiful psalm that reminds us of hope. So let's uh, hear this psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. And so let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And so as we come to declare and pray this confession together, let's come before God in humility, in honesty, uh, in contrition and in penitence as we confess our sins to him. So we pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer, and therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. So we're going to sing a worship song together now, and it's going to come up on your screen. And um, I'm hoping and praying that God will really touch your hearts as we sing these, this song together now. I will sing the wondrous story. So, brothers and sisters, as we rejoice in the gift of this day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So today, uh, just a short reflection that I wanted to bring. Uh, and we're looking together at the stories of the parables of the kingdom parables 
of Jesus. And today we've come to a parable that I want us to look at just for a few minutes. And it's a very well-known one, as they so often are. It's the parable of the wise and foolish builders. And you'll find it in Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. And so let's, um, just, let's just read this parable together now. Uh, so it's Luke chapter 6, 46 to 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house, uh, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house, uh, a house on the ground without a foundation. And the torrent shook that house and it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Uh, and so Jesus, again, telling that beautiful, simple story uh, by way of trying to help us to grasp what the kingdom of God is like. Uh, and something that I find quite remarkable about these parables is their sheer simplicity. And sometimes that is what we can stumble upon, actually, because many people, um, you know, would love to have a complicated way to follow Jesus. But actually, what the Bible is saying to us here is that actually the things of God um, are actually simple. It's, it's, there's a simplicity to it. It's not simplistic. But the, the, the instruction or the command or the call here is firstly to come to me. Jesus says, as for everyone who comes to me. He says, come to me and then hears my words and then puts them into practice. Those three points, number one, come to me, hear my words, put them into practice. I can't think of any more simple definition of discipleship. This is what it means for us to follow Christ. This is discipleship. Come to me, Jesus says. Come to me. Have you come to Christ? Uh, it's not. It's not just the, being a Christian. Isn't just about going to church or doing good things or following a, a set of rules. It's about coming to Christ, to know Christ. Do you know Christ? Do you know Jesus today? That's the place we start in repentance. In other words, changing our minds, turning to God, uh, seeking God, in repentance and faith, believing in Him, putting our trust in Him. In repentance and faith, we can come to him. But he doesn't only want us to come to him because it's a living relationship. It's not, it's not, it's not rules and regulations so much as relationship. If you come to me and hears my words, there's something wonderful for us uh, today, friends, about that we can hear God's voice. God speaks to us through scripture. He speaks to us also in creation. He speaks to us in conscience. He speaks to us in so many different ways, uh, primarily in the scripture where God is revealed um, to us. And that's where we can discover what Jesus said and who he, who he is. If we come to me, he said, come to me and hear my words. But even then, even if we've come to him and heard his words, there's something else powerful that we need to lay hold upon. And it's the third thing. He, Jesus says, um, come to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. Now that is the key, is it not? And sometimes we've come to Christ and we've heard his word and yet we can all struggle sometimes. And we do. I struggle. It's not always easy. And sometimes it's the simple words. Love your enemies. Love your neighbor as yourself. Sometimes it's these simple words that are the hardest to put into practice. And yet, isn't that what discipleship, following Jesus, isn't that at the heart of it? Isn't that what it's all about? 
Um, this kingdom parable is powerful. It is a discipleship tool for us to really lay, 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 uh, lay hold of. It's interesting that Jesus uses then this picture of uh, building and talking of digging down deep. He dug down deep, Jesus says. And I think this, this is such an apt picture for us at the moment. Uh, isn't it true that sometimes we can be quite shallow in how we can approach life, how we can approach God, how we can approach one another? But actually, the Bible says that we are to be those as disciples of Jesus who dig down deep and who lay a foundation uh, for our Christian lives. I want to encourage you that part of growing in your faith is about working hard at digging down deep and laying a foundation, a foundation of love, a foundation of coming to Christ, a foundation of hearing his word and then putting it into practice. It's something intentional. It's not by accident that you grow as a Christian. It's something that we do intentionally. And it says that he dug down deep. Are you digging into God's word? Are you digging in prayer? Are you digging in loving kindness to one another and, 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 and acts of service to one another? Are we digging down deep in our discipleship? Are we really getting into the word of God as God calls us to? I wonder, are you in God's word each day, every day? Uh, I get into God's word in the mornings, digging down deep. I'm reading in the minor prophets at the moment, which is almost like reading the newspapers, to be honest with you, because it so, feels so current about what's going on in our world. But my heart for us um, today is that we would dig down deep because what does the next uh, phrase say? It says, because when the flood came, those words, when the flood came, and, and we are in a time of flood right now, the coronavirus and all the things that are affecting us, um, the, it's like a torrent, as it says. When the flood came and the torrent struck that house, it says it could not shake it. We know that we're living in a time of torrent, a time of flood, a time of loss. That torrent might look like grief. It might look like isolation. It could look like many things, bereavement, disappointment, uh, anxiety. All sorts of floods, torrents can come upon us. Another one I was thinking about this week, actually, as I was thinking about the work of Open Doors, who, who are an organization that helps to support people who are persecuted as Christians. And the, the particular flood that's coming for some Christians around the world at the moment is persecution. I'm hearing that in some countries that um, uh, COVID-19 is, 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 is an opportunity where there is persecution for Christians to be persecuted even further. And um, it's so sad to hear our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world suffering in, in these times, trials, tribulations, sorrows. When the flood came, Jesus told this story. He said about the house that was built on the rock. He said when the torrent struck that house, it could not shake it because it was built. It was well built. It was built on the rock. I wonder today, are you building on, on the rock of Jesus Christ? What is your foundation for your life? Is it the rock of Jesus Christ and God's word, which stands forever? Jesus said his word endures forever. His promises are true and trustworthy. Or are we building on the sand of the sand of many? There's many ways of thinking about the sand. I mean, one of the main things that the sand can represent is just our contemporary culture. It's always shifting. It's not stable. It's always changing. Uh, and the tides of culture that come in and out change the, the sand and the grains. And so if you were to build upon that sand, the constantly changing ground of culture, there's no foundation there. 
um, people are trying to build on on pleasing other people and just you know people pleasing the fear of man what other people think of us or or or, or lies we believe about ourselves these are all building on the sand and actually we want to believe what god says about us not not believing the lies of the evil one about us so there's so many ways we can think of the sand but but the sand simply tells us that we don't want to build on that foundation of sand or or, or a poor foundation because that house crashed to the ground it collapsed and the bible says its destruction was complete and I'm, I'm so sad as i look around me today because I don't only see that metaphor or that picture of houses built on sand. I can see whole countries that have been built on sand. And it's so sad today to see people struggle and not have a rock to put their feet upon, to build their house upon, to build their life upon. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, dear friends, today, my encouragement, my heart in sharing God's word with you today is that your foundation is in Jesus Christ and that you can dig down deep and that you can come to him, hear his word, Put it into practice and so there find his faithfulness, his love and his truth. He will never leave you or forsake you. This is a word of such encouragement for us as we hold on to Christ in, in difficult times. Beloved people of God, be strong in the Lord. The day of loss and grief and isolation and trouble and sorrow that day may be for a moment, but we are a people of hope. And even though we struggle, and even though the torrent and the flood will come, we know that we have a rock, Jesus Christ, and that we can trust in that rock of our salvation. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our fortress. He's our refuge and strength a very present help to us in times of trouble. And today, friends, that's my hope and my prayer for us as we gather uh, in this midday service that we can look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and we can build our lives on him. Amen. Amen. So let's take a moment to pray, dear friends. Let's take a moment to just be in prayer now. And uh, after we pray, I'll lead us in the Lord's Prayer. So let's just take some moments to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this powerful parable of building on Jesus Christ and building our lives on you. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would lead us not to build on um, fractured or shifting foundations, but to build on you and upon your word. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray we put our trust in the Lord. We lift up our eyes to the hills. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Father, today we want to pray for our world so much of it built on sand. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will bring a great revival in our day of people turning and returning to the Lord, of many people coming to Christ for the first time or maybe returning um, to, their, to, to their first love. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will be at work all across our nation today. Father, we pray for the NHS. We pray for uh, in its 72nd birthday. We pray for all the key workers and nurses and doctors and, and staff in our NHS, Father God. We thank you for them all. And we pray that they will know your blessing and your help in these still difficult days as the virus is still with us. Oh, Lord, pour out your love 
and your energy and strength and resources to those working in healthcare. And we thank you for them, Father God. We are so grateful for them. Heavenly Father, we pray, oh God, that you would give us, as your people, uh, give us grace to repent of our sins and to turn to Christ. Lord, we're so mindful that COVID-19 has highlighted issues of climate change where we have not cared for creation. It's highlighted injustice and inequality Father, where we've not loved our neighbor as ourselves. And we're also mindful, Father, of, of the issue of racism that has been surfacing. Uh, and we know, Lord God, that we, we want to just turn to you, our God. We thank you, Father, that you can, as we repent and turn to God, that you are merciful and gracious to us, Heavenly Father. And we pray that you would lead us in righteousness, lead us in truth, Lead us in the ways of the Lord and help us to put into practice the words that Jesus gave us and the, and, and the example and the teaching of Jesus, the imitation of Christ. Oh God, we pray that you would teach us to walk before you, uh, to walk with God and to fear the Lord and to shun evil. Help us in these days, O oh God, that we may reset and renew our lives according to your image and your, your likeness, O oh God. And we pray, Father, for our church family. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we just name them before you now and we lift them up to you in prayer and praying, O oh God, for healing in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, for strengthening and comfort in the name of Jesus. We pray for the peace of the Lord upon every one of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray for those, as we've mentioned, Lord, who are being persecuted for their faith. And we pray, oh God, the strengthening of the Lord to all who suffer persecution at this time. Blessed, may they know the blessing of the nearness of God to them. And may you provide for them in their needs and in their circumstances, Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, we call on the name of Jesus right now and pray for your glory to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Lord, we're longing for the kingdom of God to come and the will of God to be done. Uh, and we pray, Heavenly Father, for your glory. All these things, Heavenly Father, we offer them to you. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now sisters and brothers, let's pray for the help of the Holy Spirit because we need his help. I need the Holy Spirit. I'm reminded daily of my need of the Holy Spirit. So be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving and sanctifying power. Speak to us wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing, and peace. Come upon us, fire from heaven, and send us out with love and courage. So brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. We proclaim not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. And so we come as we close to our affirmation of our commitment to living as disciples of Jesus. And this is what we've been talking about in the parable of the wise and foolish builders. May we, as we make these commitments May we commit ourselves to putting them into practice uh, as, we, as we're able to do during this time. 
So will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer? With the help of God, we will. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and turn to the Lord. With the help of God, we will. Will you proclaim by word and example the gospel of Christ? With the help of God, we will. Will you serve others and love your neighbor as yourself? With the help of God, we will. Will you seek to fully obey the Holy Spirit on all occasions? With the help of God, we will. Will you defend the weak and seek peace and justice? With the help of God, we will. Will you pursue a life saturated with God? With the help of God, we will. Maybe just take a moment of quiet as we listen to God as we close. Beloved people of God, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And my prayer, my sincere prayer today, friends, is that you will come to Christ, that you will hear his word, put it into practice, and know his blessing in your life today and every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.